I'm Reen Wilcoxon, founder of Embroidery Garden, and I'm going to be showing you how to embroider on a purchased table runner using one of Durkee Hoop's Easy Frames. Let's take a look at the frame. This is Durkee Hoop's 5x7 Easy Frame for a single needle machine. Durkee makes frames and hoops for single and multi-needle machines. They are available in sets or sold individually. These frames are made to use with sticky stabilizer. Each frame has a centering notch built in to each side of it. You can see the notch here at the bottom. There's one at the top and one on each side. These notches will help you to get perfect alignment of your embroidery. Let's take a look at the runner I'll be embroidering on. This is a purchased runner with a lining on the back side. I've already printed a template of the design I want to stitch and place it on the runner where I want it to be. You'll notice I want to embroider close to the left hand side of the runner. I wouldn't be able to use a traditional hoop and get the type of placement that I want. Also, this runner is a bit thick, making it hard to hoop. Since my design is five inches wide, I'll be stitching it in the easy frame like this. This will be keeping the bulk of the runner, which I have rolled up, it's a very long runner, and clipped together to kind of control it. We'll keep all of that bulk to the left of my machine and out of the throat area. I've cut a piece of Filmoplast stabilizer, which is a sticky stabilizer sold by Jerky, and we're gonna remove the backing from it. I like to just remove part of it and take the frame, turn it to the back side, start to apply the stabilizer, pressing it down into the frame, and then remove the rest of the backing as I press it down along the sides of the frame. Once you get it where you want it, make sure that it is secured all the way around. And now we're going to be ready to get our runner on. Since the runner is hard to fold to find my centers and mark it, what I'm going to do for this particular project is I'm going to place, um, I'm going to take a ruler and a pen and draw the placement lines on here using the built-in notches. So I'm just gonna line my ruler up with the notches and draw a line. I'm gonna do it side to side also. This isn't something that you would want to do on something that is thin or see-through fabric because once you placed it on here and you um, embroidered, you might be able to see through it. So again, I'm only doing it on this particular project since it's very thick and hard to hoop. So now I want to get my runner onto my hoop. What I like to do is take a straight pin, put it into the center of my template. I'm gonna put my Hoop down on top of a pressing mat, and I'm going to line up the centers. So I'm going to take my pen and line it up with the center that I drew on the stabilizer. I'm also going to take a pin and put it at the end of this line and make sure that I am in line with the line that I drew. Okay, I'm good there. I'm gonna do it over here also. And you can see I am right on it here. And I'm gonna check now the um, other line. I'm just gonna stick a pin into it. Look down here to see if I'm lined up. It looks like I am on the line. Just make sure that the top is correct. Yep, it looks like I'm good. 
So we're ready to start to embroider. Let me remove these pins. I do have my design loaded onto my machine. And what I will tell you is on this particular runner, I am going to use a basting stitch. It's gonna stitch first, then it's gonna stitch my design Let's Flamingo. The reason I'm using a basting stitch on this particular project, if you notice my runner again, it does have a lining to it, but the lining and the front are not connected together in any way. So when I put my runner onto the stabilizer, the back is going to be secured down to that sticky stabilizer, but my top layer could still shift a little bit um, during embroidery. So that's why I'm first going to add a basting stitch to hold the top layer down. Let's head over to the machine. Let me gather up the runner, my frame, and get it onto the machine. Again, all this bulk is going over to the left side to stay out of the way. So the first thing I wanna do is line up my embroidery. I wanna line up the needle with the center of my template. So I'm gonna use the move keys on my machine and I'm going to move my hoop, my frame, until my needle is lined up with that center. And it looks like I'm good right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to remove my template carefully. I want my runner to stay secured to that sticky stabilizer. And again, I'm gonna be doing a basting stitch because this top layer, you can see it will move because I have a double layered runner. What you also wanna do is once you have your needle lined up is you wanna do a trace. With any aftermarket hoop, you always want to do a trace. I'm gonna use the trace feature on my machine and I'm going up into the top left corner. I can feel the edge of the jerky frame and I can see that I'm clear. I'm gonna go down to the bottom left. You can see that I'm clear there. Go over to the bottom right. You can see that I'm clear. The top right, make sure that I'm still clear and I'm good, so I'm ready to go. Remember the first thing that is going to stitch is that basting stitch to hold my top layer in place. You might wanna kinda of make sure that everything stays nice and smooth as it's doing the basting stitch. Now that that's done, I'm ready to begin stitching my design. The embroidery is all done and it looks great. Let's remove the hoop and I'll bring it over to the table to get a close look at it. I think it looks perfect. I can clean up a couple of little threads. I will remove the basting stitch. It comes out very easily. The basting stitch can be added either by your machine. Some machines have the ability to add a basting stitch, or if you um, have software, you can just draw a square, rectangle, whatever shape around what you are gonna stitch and use that as your basting stitch. You can start to remove this from the stabilizer. You can see that it will gently tear away I get this basting uh, stitch out of here.
that basting stitch was very helpful in keeping that top layer down. That'll just all pull out. On the back side, you can remove um, as much of the Filmoplast, the sticky stabilizer, as you want. Clean it up however you want. It'll easily, you can see it'll easily tear away. I'll go ahead and I'll get the rest of that off a little bit later. I'll give it a nice press and it's going to be ready to use. I think it turned out just great. So as you can see, Durky Easy Frames are very easy to use and they are extremely helpful for those hard to hoop items. You can get Durky Easy Frames from DurkyHoops.com. If you use the discount code REEN, R-E-E-N, at checkout, you'll receive a discount. 